The fibula is the lateral bone of the leg. It is not part of the knee joint and carries no weight. It has two articulations with the tibia, forming the superior tibiofibular joint and the inferior tibiofibular joint. It also forms part of the ankle joint by articulating with the talus. It consists of a proximal extremity, shaft, and distal extremity. For the purposes of this video, we'll be using a right fibula. The proximal extremity is also known as the head of the fibula. It contains an articular facet at the medial aspect for the lateral condyle of the tibia. The apex or styloid process is located posteriorly. This region where the head meets the shaft is the neck of the fibula. Proximal fibular fractures in this area can injure the common peroneal nerve. Anatomists describe the fibular shaft as having three borders and three surfaces. However, there is so much variation between fibular shafts that it is difficult to clearly outline the borders and surfaces. I looked at a number of fibulas in our anatomy lab and the borders looked slightly different in each one. One common characteristic they all share is a nutrient foramen located in the middle of the posterior surface. The nutrient foramen helps you find the crista medialis. The crista medialis divides the posterior surface into two areas for muscular origin. The flexor hallucis longus originates lateral to the crista medialis, and the tibialis posterior takes part of its origin medial to the crista. The distal extremity projects further inferior than the medial malleolus. It is composed of two surfaces, two borders, and an apex. This is the medial surface, the lateral surface, the anterior border, the posterior border, and this is the apex. The medial surface of the distal extremity has a triangular shaped base up apex down articular facet for the lateral surface of the body of the talus. The posterior talofibular and inferior transverse ligaments attach to the malleolar fossa, which is located just posterior to the facet. The anterior talofibular and calcaneofibular ligaments attach to the anterior border. The calcaneofibular ligament also has part of its attachment at the apex. The posterior border contains the lateral malleolar sulcus, which allows passage for the tendons of peroneus longus and brevis. A possible board's question you may be asked is to follow the course of the peroneus longus tendon. The tendon passes through the lateral malleolar sulcus, then inferior to the peroneal tubercle located on the lateral surface of the calcaneus, Next, it travels through the peroneal sulcus, which is found at the inferior surface of the cuboid. It courses through the third layer of plantar muscles and attaches to the plantar aspect of the medial cuneiform and the first metatarsal base.